let's take our first example from graph theory so here is the problem consider an undirected random graph of eight vertices so there are eight vertices in the graph but the graph is random by random it means that any vertex could exist or could not exist it's random we don't know the probability that there is an edge between a pair of vertices is 1 by 2 that's why we talk about probabilities we don't know whether there is an edge between these two or between any two pair of vertices so we say that the probability of existence of that edge is 1 by 2 what is asked what is the expected number of unordered cycles of length 3 so the first question that comes to mind is what does it mean by unordered cycles of length 3 here is a graph this is not the graph from the question because in the question we have 8 vertices this graph has just 6 vertices but we can use this graph to understand what it means by unordered cycles of length 3 it is not complicated it's very simple this word could just confuse you but it's very simple it just means that the graph has uh, that the graph which has a cycle of length 3 such as this graph you see this cycle a b d this is a cycle of length 3 a b d and when it puts the word unordered it just means that whether you take the cycle a b d or b d a or d a b it means that the ordering in which you label the cycle doesn't matter so a b d b d a and d, d a b all the three are just one cycle no matter how you order the cycle no matter how you traverse along the cycle it's just one cycle so it's nothing complicated it just means that this is one cycle the next thing is the probability of existence of any such cycle right so what would be the probability of existence of any such cycle let's find the probability of existence of this cycle so we say that probability that cycle ABD exists is nothing but that prob probability that edge AB exists multiplied by probability that edge BD exists multiplied by probability that edge DA exists right so the whole cycle exists means that this edge should exist this, this edge should exist and this edge should exist and that's why we multiply because we need all of them to exist so this becomes so the probability of existence of edge AB is 1 by 2 for edge BD is 1 by 2 for edge DA is 1 by 2 so we get 1 by 8 so now we know that the probability of existence of this cycle ABD is 1 by 8 why do we care about this probability because we look at the question we have to answer the expected number of unordered cycles of length 3 so basically we are dealing with expectation values and we need probability when we deal with expectation values another thing that we should ask is how many such cycles can exist in this graph of eight vertices so we have eight vertices and we have to find these cycles of length 3 how can we find them so you take any three vertices out of those eight vertices and like you took suppose ABD you can take any three vertices and then you just take these edges so it gives you a one cycle so if you take another three vertices let's say BCE it will give you another such cycle so basically what you are doing is you have to select or you have to choose three vertices out of eight vertices and you get your cycle the number of such cycles that could possibly exist will be nothing but 
how many such selections you can make or the number of ways in which you can select three vertices out of eight vertices will give you number of such cycles I mean the maximum number of such cycles so from eight vertices you can select three vertices in eight C3 ways this is 56 this means that you can have maximum 56 such cycles or there can be 56 such different cycles now let's try to answer the question which is the expected number of such cycles so we'll go by two methods method one is very intuitive so just just think about it so you can have maximum 56 such cycles and the probability that one such cycle can exist is 1 by 8 so in an intuitive manner you can think that one eighth of such a cycle is in existence right it's just intuitive it's not very mathematically sound so out of these 56 cycles if you take one cycle one of one eighth of that is in existence so if you take all of them so you can say that seven of them in existence you know why because what you can do is take maximum number of such cycles which is 56 and multiply it with the probability of existence of one such cycle which will give you seven intuitive not mathematically sound you can do it in a mathematical manner too which is by taking indicator random variables so I suppose from your probability theory class you know what are random variables and what are indicator random variables I'll, I'll summarize it quickly for you random variables what they do is they map real events to some number and what indicator random variables do they map these real events to either 1 or 0 so we say that there is an indicator random variable xi and xi is 1 if ith cycle exists and xi is 0 if ith cycle doesn't exist what do we mean by ith cycle you remember there are 56 possible cycles this i could be any of those cycles this i could be first cycle second cycle third cycle fourth cycle or the 56 cycle so it is 1 if that cycle exists it is 0 if that cycle doesn't exist and we also know that p x i is equal to 1 is 1 by 8 what is this p x i is equal to 1 means the probability that x i is equal to 1 is 1 by 8 probability that x i is equal to 1 means probability that ith cycle exists is 1 by 8 which we know from the previous slide and p x i is equal to 0 means probability that ith cycle doesn't exist and we know that this is 1 minus 1 by 8 is equal to 7 by 8 this is just the complement right okay number of such cycles is nothing but summation xi how look at this random variable look at this indicator random variable it has a very special property so if you if you do a summation over this if the cycle exists it will add one for that cycle if it doesn't exist it will add nothing because if the cycle doesn't exist the value is zero so if you will do this summation or if you do do this addition from 1 to 56 cycles you will get exactly the number of cycles because for existence of one cycle it will add 1 and if the cycle doesn't exist it doesn't add anything that is the beauty of indicator random variables that it in a way let, lets you count count your cycles or count any event or count any phenomenon or something like that depending on the question and then if you want to find the expected number of such cycles you take expectation so if you take expectation of this you get expectation summation xi and this is equal to 
summation expectation xi and this result is from the law of linearity of expectations again from your probability theory class so just to summarize quickly what is linearity of expectations that if you have expectation summation xi this summation this sigma sign comes out and this expectation goes in so e summation xi is nothing but summation e xi and what is e xi this is the definition of expectation value of any random variable is summation that random variable into probability of that random variable this is summation xi into p xi xi is 1 and p xi will be 1 by 8 and when xi is 0 p xi will be 7 by 8 so when xi is 1 p xi is 1 by 8 when xi is 0 p xi is 7 by 8 and this gives you e xi then expected number of cycles coming back to this formula or this formula expected number of cycles is summation e xi which is summation 1 by 8 because e xi is 1 by 8 from this one and when you do this summation 1 by 8 what you are doing is adding 1 by 8 56 times which is 56 into 1 by 8 and 7 so option C and so we know that expected number of such cycles would be 7 coming to the next question this is rather simple it says let G be a simple undirected planar graph on 10 vertices with 15 edges I think it should be off so let G be a simple undirected graph of 10 vertices with 15 edges so there is a simple undirected planar graph there are 10 vertices there are 15 edges and G is a connected graph then we have to tell that how many bounded faces there will be if you embed G on a plane it's planar graph so you can embed it on a plane and you have to tell the number of bounded faces let's take a look at this graph this is not the graph from the question but just to understand what are bounded faces and so if you recall from your graph theory class number of bounded faces or number of regions what do you recall so this is a graph how many regions does this graph have so this is one region this is another region this is another region so and this is another region outside right so there are basically four regions you can I suppose you can clearly see and number of bounded faces what are bounded faces okay let's get back to the number of regions so we know that there is one two three and four regions how many of them are bounded so clearly this region is bounded this region is bounded and this region is bounded you can see the boundary but if you go to this region which is outside this is not bounded it tells us that if you take any planar graph and you look at all the regions in the graph there will be one region exactly one region that will not be bounded and this region will be outside like this so what we know from this is the number of bounded faces is number of regions minus one so if you can find the number of regions you can tell the number of bounded faces and finding number of regions is very easy because we have a formula for that it's called Euler's formula Euler's formula is number of regions is equal to number of edges minus number of vertices plus 2 edges 15 vertices 10 which gives number of regions 7 and number of bounded faces is number of regions minus 1 we just did this number of regions is 7 7 minus 1 is 6 so option D.